Hello, hello. Today we will be taking a look at a short article that I found on Lifehacker Australia. You can tell it's from Australia because it's upside down. Because things from Australia are upside down. Ha, that's the joke. No. The article is entitled PCs vs. Consoles, Why I Am a Console Gamer, and it was full of some bullshit. Also, it's important to note this was written in 2015, on August the 18th. So, keep that in mind. I know I will. In any event, it goes through five reasons why this guy prefers to play on console. And while, in technicality, I can't say his opinion is wrong, I will say that some of the uh, basi bases? basises that he bases his, um, his points on are, are kind of ridiculous. And since the truth shall set you free, let's move along to point one. Console games work out of the box every time. Every time. Consoles work out of the box every time. He says, let's start with some honesty. I'm too lazy these days to be a PC gamer. Okay, we're done. Wrap it up. We're finished. We're done, guys. Shut it down. It's over. It's over. Ah, oh, no, we can't. We can't do that. No, that's not fair. In any event, at least I am glad that he comes right out of the starting gate saying, I'm too lazy to be a PC gamer, as if there's a lot of effort involved with it that is mandatory. He says he doesn't want to spend any time whatsoever setting up a game to play it. Of course, this doesn't apparently mean, you know, the incredible amount of hours it takes for your console to download a game before you can actually play it. And as we know, consoles tend to bottleneck your internet connection. And in a world where games can be 30, 40, 50, 60 gigabytes to download, well, take the video by Brad Langshaw that I did a rebuttal on, 10 reasons why someone might choose to buy a console. Here, he talks about how user-friendly the new consoles are, and then uses a picture simultaneously of a 39-hour GTA 5 download. Ah, timing, Brad, timing, it's important. What I like about console gaming is that you don't need to worry about resolution colors V-Sync, or if we were time traveling back to the 90s, which sound blaster driver to use? Well, that last bit doesn't matter because this is not the 90s and we are not capable of time trap. Well, we are just only in one direction and fairly slowly. At least most of us anyway. Let's see, resolution. Normally it's automatically adjusted to your monitor, in which case if it's not, you can just change it in the graphics settings and bam, you're all good. Colors? I don't know about adjusting colors. Maybe he means colorblind mode, in which case, since most people are not colorblind, and I am not colorblind, despite um, what you may be led to believe. You don't mess with colors. Perhaps you can mess with colors on your monitor, but of course televisions do the same thing, so that doesn't put console ahead of, you know, the PC. Seems to me like Mr. What's his name? His name's Thorin? That's actually kind of badass. Thorin says, I realize this comes at the sacrifice of customization, but I'm not the type to really customize anyway. Indeed, he's going to take games how they are given to him, and um, he's going to like it, I guess. I don't know, I suppose some people can think that if they wish. I'd prefer my entertainment to come out of the box ready to go so I don't have to spend time worrying about how I can make it work. Well, I don't know about you, but I'd rather spend 10 minutes fidgeting with the settings for just a little bit to get it just right instead of waiting 39 hours for my Grand Theft Auto to download. But hey, that's just me. People can be different, and that's okay. I mean, after all, just think of all the incredible, amazing things that you could do in 39 hours. You could, I don't know, clean your kitchen or sweep the front porch. You could make your bed a, a lot of times. I don't know. Thorin tells us, I'd rather upgrade my system once every six or seven years with a single bulk purchase than worry about and waste time shopping for individual parts every two years. Um, one, you don't have to upgrade every two years. This is obvious, and I've said it ad nauseum. Of course, this was made just about a year ago, so I understand. Oh, well, no, I don't, because back then, it was still a silly point against the PCs anyway. You don't have to upgrade every two years. You don't have to upgrade every three or four years. You upgrade when you personally feel like you should. Not every six or seven years when you do need to upgrade, and you only have, what, three choices to choose from and not, you know, a gajilgabillion. Anyway, let's move along. Consoles aren't computers, and that's a good thing. Hmm, what a very confusing thing to say. What does he say? I spend 40 to 50 hours a week in front of a computer for work. Well, you are the product of the life decisions that you choose, Thorin. And I'm sure most of you do too. Oh, God, Thorin, you're adorable. The last thing I want to do is spend my leisure hours there as well because Thorin doesn't understand that you could play a PC on a TV monitor. Console gaming gets me away from my PC, out of my computer chair, or in the case of mobile gaming, out of my house completely, and away from work. 
All right, again, if you uh, think this is a reason to be on console instead of PC, then get a PC, hook it up to a TV instead of a computer monitor, and then get a controller, right? Get a controller and use it with your PC as you sit on the couch. Uh, this is an option that the, uh, the PC affords you. Plus, you get to kick back on the couch, which is a great way to take a load off at the end of the long day. It's not how I take my loads off at the end of a long day, but hey, to each his own. Console games are made for controllers. Now, of course, I could just sum all this up by saying you can use a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller with your PC, but, you know, that just wouldn't do this malarkey justice. We're going to take things a, a, little, a little deeper. I do like the way he starts out, though, because this makes some sort of sense. Here's the thing about the controller versus keyboard and mouse debate. I'm not huge into twitchy first-person shooters, so I couldn't care less about precision. So he acknowledges the fact that the mouse and keyboard are more precise. Thank you very much. It's very tiresome to have to explain how it is not the case. Especially not with auto-aim. When I said mouse and keyboard are more precise, it's is. Mouse and keyboard is more precise. Ugh, mea culpa. I have a reputation to keep here. I'll play and enjoy the occasional slow shooter like the upcoming Fallout 4. <laughs> well, 23 frames a second in firefights is slow, I will give you that, Thorin. But you typically won't find me playing Battlefield or Call of Duty, so that whole mouse and keyboard is the best and most precise control scheme just doesn't do it for me. Fair enough. For as many keyboard-centric games there are on PC, there are just as many games that are best played with a controller because they're made that way. No, 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 no. You don't seem to understand. Games? Consoles, things that are designed for the inhibitive design of what a controller is. It holds the interface back. When you look at the desktop, for instance, versus the, uh, the dashboards of the Xbox or the PlayStation or the GameCube or any console, like the Xbox One dashboard you see here, you go left, up, down, right, and there you go. The entire interface, the entire schmegagel here is designed to be used with the controller's limitations in mind. The dashboards of every console that I have used, and I have used a great deal, even the Wii's, which was fairly intuitive because you get to point at things and then press a button to get them to work. Uh, all of these pale in comparison to the desktop, which is almost infinitely customizable and can be made as simple or as complex or as dirty or as cluttered as you see fit. Oh, and of course we have to wrap this up in a neat little bow since you can use the controllers on the PC. Well, there you go. Let's move along now. What's the next point we got? Consoles get more... <laughs> no, no. And no, Thorin, no, they... <laughs> no, they... They really, they really, really don't. You are objectively wrong on this, and it is self-evident at this point. I don't need to pull a graph out of my asshole. Of course, I'm going to do it anyway, because apparently I have created a reputation for myself where I use graphs and data and figures and statistics to actually back up what I say. Ugh, what a burden it is to be right all the time. Dear God, it's like being a kid in a candy store on Google Images here. God, which one do I want? Which? Oh, look, an alien. Let's go with this one. Dear God, I can't make that one 1920 by 1080p. This is gonna look shit in the video. Look how big that list is. Maybe I could just, one of these, this picture or that graph or this chart or that line or, th ah! It's pretty rare that a big name PC game is released exclusively for PC. Okay, okay, listen. All right, it, it's at this point, I had done like three different recordings for naming off all the exclusives for PC, but it took me kind of a long time to do it. So, yeah. I encourage everybody, just just go to Google, exclusive PC games, and then year whatever, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, to keep in the temporal constraints of this video, and then go to past that, go to 16, 17, 18, and beyond, and you'll see what I'm getting at here. Seriously, go take a look, the list is fucking impressive as shit. He says, but console exclusives stay exclusive. Um, no, they really don't. Now, in more recent days, this has become more and more true, but even from August of 2015, it's pretty clear to see that, no, your so-called exclusives turn out to be either timed exclusives or Microsoft just says, hmm, that PC money, though. Blah, blah, blah. And when it boils down to it, the games are the only thing that matter. That's why we're even having this discussion, right? No, because you have four other points that don't have anything to do with the games, so I don't know why you would say this, even though the other things... Ugh. 
Nintendo is still one of the best developers out there. No, they really, aren't. they really aren't. They're really just a bunch of fucking assholes. And they make games exclusively for their own systems. Um, Pokemon Go, of course, but that's after this article. Can't fault you for that. He then names off some PC-exclusive games, and some of those aren't even PC-exclusives. He also doesn't know what emulators or ROMs are. But he says, some of those are my favorite games, and they keep me coming back. Of course, for every game he listed, we could list five, six, seven, however many it is that are exclusives. He says, unless you're huge into strategy games, PC games don't even come close with quality exclusives. This is entirely subjective, though, but I would vehemently disagree that they have better quality games, especially when you consider that our platform has much higher hardware ceilings than yours does. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that PC gamers have a higher standard for what is quality than a console gamer does. Maybe that helps put things into more perspective. Don't give me that garbage nonsense PC games don't even come close with quality exclusives. They literally do things that console games cannot do. Again, hardware limitations, it's a huge issue with consoles, and you see it in the games. Reason number five. They're different beasts. Wait, when, one of your points consoles aren't computers and that's a good thing? I'd, you have five points, how can you repeat? Anyway, let's face it, PC gaming and console game are, console game are, ugh are two different things. Both have their strengths and weaknesses. Honestly, I'd argue they're so different that they're almost impossible to compare. Both attract a different kind of person entirely. <laughs> really? You think it takes a completely different kind of person entirely to play on a PC or a console? Really? You said, the first thing you said, in fact, was you're too lazy to play on PC. And here you're saying there are two different people, <laughs> console gamers and PC gamers. So I guess by... By that stretch, you're saying all people who play on consoles are, are lazy. Bravo. But let's keep going on. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, doesn't make one better than the other. Blah, blah, blah. Sure, maybe as console gamers are a bit lazy. Oh, you say. <laughs> you say. <laughs> hmm. Sure, maybe as console gamers are a bit lazy. Wait. Maybe us console gamers? Shouldn't that be maybe we console gamers? <sighs> because console gamers is the subject word and it's not an object. <sighs> I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I'm not going to look it up. We crave intelligent, hard, and complicated gaming experiences. Really? Do you? I'm not. Well, I'm not saying you don't, but if that's really what you're going for, I think we can both agree that the most complicated games would be on the PC because the PC allows for that kind of a game to be much more fitting. You have the better hardware, which allows for more processing power, more stuff in the background can occur at one time. You have the fact that you have mouse and keyboard, so you can manipulate boxes and graphs and charts and all sorts of things like that much more easily. And it just seems to me like if you were really after intelligent, hard, and complicated gaming experiences, you would have more options on the PC, especially because a lot of these options don't necessarily take a lot of graphics to put forth. Uh... So you have a lot of indie games, especially, that make games like this. Games that are uh, more narrowly focused on a market, perhaps. But you end this with, you just have to trust us more. No, I'm not. If anything has uh, been taught to me by YouTube, it's that you don't trust console fanboys. At least when you wrote this article, you weren't going for one company over another. You weren't saying Xbox or PS4. You were saying console gaming in general, which is a lot less centric on a single company. That's where the article ends, by the way, there is no epilogue, afterlog, postlog. I'm about to let myself out and have a postlog myself, actually. But there you go, Lifehacker Australia's Why I'm a Console Gamer. He had five reasons, one of them was really a repeat. One of those reasons was really mostly a... Really, really, it really was just kind of a summary, I suppose. It was, it was dumb, but it was a summary. I mean, bravo for trying. Not the worst article I've ever read. I mean, yeah, there were some... Just downright false things that were said, objectively wrong things that were stated. And it did seem as if you were completely oblivious about some of the things the PC allows you to do. Thorn Klesowski. Let's Google this guy. Maybe in the time since this article was written, he's um, he's moved to, I don't know, maybe PC gaming. Let's see. Thorn Klesowski. Life hacker. Oh. I'm sure he's a great guy.